geologic layers or the lower superposition is pretty much normally asked on the earth science regions. So the lower superposition simply states the lowest layer of rock or lowest layer of a rock exposure is the oldest and this is always the case right so no matter what when you're trying to put the layers or the sequence of the layers together or in the proper order the lowest layer is always going to be the oldest also part of the rule you should always remember sediments settle out uh, settle out of water horizontally so first the oldest layer is going to be at the bottom and the layers of rock was originally horizontal so that's the main thing that you need to understand when trying to put the layers of rocks together and again the fundamental fact sedimentary rocks form horizontal layers right. now everything else everything else that happens has to occur after the formation of the layer. So for example, if we have tilting, so if the layers was if you have layers of rocks that's tilted, first thing you need to understand that the layers was originally horizontal. And the bottom layer was the oldest. It gets younger towards the top. It was originally horizontal when it was deposited and then it tilted. So tilting comes afterwards. And you can see some of the examples here of where you have tilting of the layers. Remember it was originally horizontal. Now folds and folds. Here's other example. So folding or fold a uh, folding or folds. So that's bends in rock layers produced by by movements of the earth's crust. So again, the layers had to have been there first. It had to have formed first. It had had to have been horizontal. And then, because of tectonic forces on either one side or the other side of the layers, they're either going to bend or fold. Okay, so just as if you're folding a piece of paper, right? The geologic layers will fold. But remember, it was always horizontal before that. Right? And we see different examples of folding, folding of geologic layers. Now, other occurrences or events that happen in geologic layers, for example, are faults, which is breaks in the rock where movement have occurred. You can see here in our example, our diagram, you would say you have the formation of shale. Okay. Then let's just say this is limestone. And then the formation of shale again. And then faulting. Now the reason why we can say that because if you notice the layers going across they don't match. So something afterwards happened after the layers was formed. So in this case the last thing to occur was the faulting. Okay, the faulting within the geologic section. And here's our real life example. Here we have a a, a person that's standing by and right behind them you have the layers of rock. You can see this gray layer of rock when you come across all of a sudden it jumps up right so that's caused by faulting faulting of the layers and again the layers would have to have formed first before any type of faulting may have occurred okay and again we have other examples of this now what's real important here is contact metamorphism all right so we have instances of igneous intrusions and extrusions now what you need to really understand here, you have to recognize where you have these dashed lines. These dashed lines represent contact metamorphism. So contact metamorphism can only occur when the surrounding rock layers was already present. It has to make contact with the surrounding layers of rock. So in other words, the layers of rock was already there. So for example, if you look at our diagram right here, the first layer would be our limestone, second would be sandstone, third would be shale, and then the igneous, in this case, extrusion. Okay, that would be the fourth occurrence because it made contact with the limestone, 
sandstone, and shale. Alright, so that's the key thing here. If it makes, if it has contact metamorphism, then that means the surrounding rock was already present. So most likely, the intrusion or the extrusion it is the youngest event to have occurred. Alright, here's another example. You have limestone, then the sandstone, and then the shale occurred, and then the igneous intrusion at sea. Because you see, it has contact metamorphism with the with the sandstone, and it has contact metamorphism with the shale above. So that means the surrounding rock was there previous. And also, that key thing here, no pun intended, is the key. Look at the key. Anytime you have a diagram, it may hold clues. Now, an unconformity is essentially a gap, a gap in geologic layers. So, in other words, some of the, the geologic layers may be missing, and they're missing due to erosion. So, you may have formation of the layers originally. For example, you have deposition of rocks A, B, and C. Then, in this case, you have uplift, tilting, and erosion. Okay? And then, subsidence and deposition of rock of rocks F and G. So now, right here, we have, in this example, what we call an angular unconformity. Okay, you have an angular unconformity. And we have different types, different variations. We have a non-conformity. Okay, so an unlapped crystal rock, crystalline rock. Then we have our, again, angular unconformity. Then we have a disconformity. Essentially, you have s some layers of rock that's missing, and the new layers of rock is filled in. And your paraconformity. Okay, but the main idea is that you have missing, missing layers of rock that's filled in by other layers of rock, and that's caused by weathering and erosion. All right, so that forms our gap or unconformity. Right? And we see various examples here in these photographs.